okay, so then I read for the fun, but I says, well, I don't, I can like the TV, and they went, yeah, it was okay, but, uh, you know what, I said, well, I rewrote it, oh, okay, well, then we'll, we'll get you to lay something down, so then I did that, so, and it worked, so, ah, yes, my son, you must have a good backspin. <laughs> He's got, he's got space, and he can pour match Julianne Fries for Fleet. There's more back now, and we'll torture the handy logomatic absolutely free for only. Character that I did, he said it's not in the French later, but and the other the other one was the, the guy who only had one line all the time. And, 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 so, so Gary would say, which? <laughs> what? <laughs> no, 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 you were Al's waiter, I was Al. You were Al's waiter. Yeah. Like, what did I say? You sounded like, hey Al. Oh, that guy. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, okay. I, I'm sorry I've forgotten this character. <laughs> hey Al. And I went in the back, I go, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> and I said, shut up! <laughs> well, I'd like to know which one of you guys um, uh, created Hexadecimal. <laughs> and are you still with that woman? <laughs> no, I mean the character. Writing her it was a, it was a it was a wonderful vehicle. Uh, gals, I got to play every emotion you ever ever could have felt and more. <laughs> Uh, way, way, way back in the mists of time in the mid 80s, uh, myself and Ian Pearson, who's one of the other creators of the show, uh, we did a pop promo for Dire Straits called Money for Nothing, yeah. which was the first computer generated pop promo. Thank you. And the machine we produced that on was called an FGS, and it was, at the time, it was state of the art. These days, you'd be better off using a cell phone. But, uh, and that machine, we became convinced that that machine was alive. Because if you sat there and animated, and then you got your shots ready, and then you set your shots rendering, and you sat and watched them render, everything was fine. But as soon as you tried to leave the room, the machine would crash. <laughs> and you'd come back in, and you'd restart it, and set it going, and watch it for half an hour. And it's like, oh, it's fine, okay, let's go out and get some sleep, or some coffee, or whatever. And we'd leave the room, come back, and the machine had crashed as soon as we walked out the door. <laughs> and we were convinced that there was something alive and chaotic about that machine. So when later we created the Queen of Chaos, um, you know, she was basically the FGS machine that we'd done now as well, because she was, you know, she was crazy and she loved company and she wouldn't let anybody leave. She wanted you know, so the relationship with Bob, between Bob and Hex was very much like the relationship between us and the FGS machine. <laughs> okay, I want to get some of the guys and girls down the other end to say things, so maybe we could have a question for someone. Anybody got a question? Question? Or just a request for somebody to say something in a voice. Did you catch that? When you play more than one character, do they sound the same to you? I'm going to hand the mic to Scott McNeil first. Oh, that was... There's actually only one voice. It's all just done electronically and manipulated. <laughs> and everything sounds the same in my head. Um, it's, it's a, I've got so many voices in my head at any given time. The trick in my world is trying to figure out which one sounds like my voice. Scott, you don't know what you sound like. I don't know what I sound like, but apparently there's people in LA that can do me perfectly. So. 
Yeah, the other question. question would be, no, every character is, you have to create it from another you know, spot, but the voice shouldn't sound so. Hopefully not. No. Yeah. Sometimes there, are, there were similarities, I would find, with certain characters that uh, I've played before. And you get a lot of a lot of like the, the binomes and all them running around, and so you gotta you gotta cover all those things, you know. Like you, you'd have Matrix in the back going, "This isn't mainframe. It's never mainframe. Why can't we ever get back? And what is it with you and guys on bikes?" <laughs> <laughs> and then next thing you know, you have like a little binome coming through. Oh my goodness! I don't believe my eyes. <laughs> and so you try to make them as different as possible. But yeah, sometimes I mean, when, if you've gathered a whole bunch of them during an episode or something, or if you're doing back-to-back -back episodes, sometimes there could be a little bit of similarity. But you guys don't notice that, do you? Come on. It's all the eyes, dear boy. It's all the eyes. They might, but they don't—they're drawn differently, so they must. Sound. <laughs> you need names here. So come on, questions, questions. We were questions. There's one. Yeah. Um, one thing I noticed with uh, Rebuilding, we started uh, when we were changing. Started adding a lot more things that were happening at the time. Do you think it still holds up to time? Especially, for example, you have the uh, X File parodies, the Sailor Moon parodies, stuff like that. Do people still, when new people come in, do they still catch those parodies that you've talked to? I think for sure people have noticed the evolution of the show as it was going along. Definitely. I mean, like even, even just the, the animation itself. I remember when uh, new episodes would come and you guys were using great technology, the colors and everything that was, it was just popping off the screen and it was becoming more and more like more than a television show, more like a movie, you know, and, and it was, it was fantastic. I remember you sitting us down and us watching episodes of what you guys had rendered and holy, you know what, it was just, we'd, we'd be sitting there just going, wow, look at this. And I think, I think it holds up great. I mean, it's it's still playing on retro retro television. Yes, we are. I know. Retro. It makes you feel so old, you know. Like you. <laughs> when I was watching the show, I was I was three years old. Yeah, years ago. God, and they're adults <laughs> now. <laughs> it, and yeah, it it sort of makes you feel decrepit, but uh, I think I think the the show holds up fantastically well. Yeah. Hang on a second. Hang on a second. <laughs> You guys want to hear this? Oh, this is this fast. And we got to make sure he's got a microphone so you can hear him. Yes, I am not a voice actor, so I can't project like these guys. Um, what was that saying? Oh, yeah, I mean, a lot of you guys and girls are, are too young to get a lot of the references that we put in there in, like, 94. So, uh, but I think you tend to get it, don't you? Yeah. So, and, and I mean, a lot. I get a lot of people going, you know, I watched it when I was four and I thought it was colourful and bright, and I loved it, and I was entranced by it. Then I watched it when I was 12 or 14, and now I get the jokes, and I understand that joke now. And That's not unlike, you know, classic Warner Brothers stuff, or, you know, any stuff. You know, you can watch it at any given age, and I don't think, I really don't think this stuff doesn't age. You know, I remember as a kid watching Looney Tunes stuff, Bugs Bunny cartoons, and they were making these World War references, yeah. and I got it. What's interesting is all of the stuff that these guys did in the backgrounds. <clears throat> and one of the yeah, one of the episodes I can't remember which one it was, but there's this there's an outside scene of, uh, of a street. I mean, it's the, I think they're in Dot's Diner, and there's cars going back and forth, and this big moving truck goes by, and I had to stop it when I had it on video. It's like two small sprites with big CPUs. <laughs> Yeah, we have a, a movie company, big, two small men with big hearts. So it was two small sprites with big seats. Oh, with big heads! No, that's a different... Anyway, I just said... Hi. Um, I always felt like an intruder on Reboot. Uh, because the rest of the cast treated me poorly. Uh, they were not welcoming, and, and I would get death threats from Michael Benny. Uh, this, it is true. Every cast I'm in, I am treated poorly, and I, uh, I try to reciprocate. Oh, 
And God, there, going, wait, that's his wife telling me not to believe a word he said. Gary's phone always went off in session. <laughs> and he did the same thing. Or, or actually, he would often take a call in session. Just hang on just for a second, I'm recording. Oh, what? Really? Oh, oh, well, I could be there at three. Uh, that was her. She was telling me to, to not believe anything that you said. <laughs> We all love you, Ian Corlett, because I gotta tell you, Ian Corlett, Be careful, Michael's behind. Ian James Corlett, and Michael, yeah, we love you, Michael. You know that, don't you? Right. Yeah. Yeah, but then say something for crying out loud. But well, I gotta tell you, Ian Corlett, he probably. <laughs> that Ian had replaced the character until the show was airing. I mean, I, no one ever told me. <laughs>